Okay. Tip number two on how to improve your mathematics, how to, how, how to study math, how to optimize your abilities to learn math, and any other subjects. Okay, this applies to everything that you're doing. Okay. In general, the people who are bad at math don't do their homework, don't do math, right? They figure, you know, they understand the concept and they don't need to do the practices to be able to, you know, optimize their ability to do it so they don't make mistakes, right? And that is the number one problem with people is people don't practice math, right? They read about it, they look at it, they say, oh yeah, that's easy, but they actually ne never sit down and actually do it, right? And that is the problem, right? In mathematics, for you to learn mathematics, initially, if you don't speak the language, if you're not good at math, initially, you need to be able to sit down and actually do problems. And you need to do a lot of homework at the beginning. And mathematics, the way it works is, it's, it's, it's a steep learning curve, right? Initially, it's a lot hard, you know, it's hard to sit down and do a lot of problems because your mind wanders and you're not used to the whole process, right? So it's a steep learning curve. But once you get up there, once you start doing a fair bit of mathematics, the more you do, the easier math becomes, right? So it's front end loaded. That's one of the things that you, you, you figure out in math, math, mathematics, right? With a lot of things that you do, actually. You do a lot of work at the beginning, and then it's coasting it after that. Because once you kick yourself up to that elevation, then you can just coast, you can just float, right? And if you're trying to learn math initially, if you're trying to learn math and you don't know math, and you're not doing your homework, or if you're you know, doing 10 minutes a day, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to learn math, and you're not going to progress, and you're going to stay in that you know, group that you know, ends up hating mathematics because they can't do it, and it's really hard, and blah, 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 blah. And you know, the number one thing is mathematics is not hard. It's really a reflection of how much effort you put into it, right? A lot of things in life end up being hard if you don't actually practice them, right? If you practice something, and if you practice hard, if you practice it hard, and if you practice it long enough, it doesn't become, you know, it doesn't remain hard, right? It becomes easier and easier the more you practice it, right? And your first, first advice when it comes to your actual study habits is to study long periods, okay? The longer you study, the better it is. And you know, people really don't uh, really grasp the reason why that is. And we're actually going to go through right now, and I'm going to tell you mathematically why it's important for you to study longer periods. Okay? Let's assume right now that if you're beginning to learn mathematics, let's say you're going to spend an hour a day, five days a week doing it. And I know most people don't spend an hour a day, but I'm using an hour a day because it's a nice round number. And if you're if you're just learning mathematics, if you've hit up, if you've hit, you know, you've had you you found math to be hard and it's not hard, you know, you've been lied to. Mathematics is not hard. It's just it's it, it's in our DNA, right? We're hardwired for math. So, you know, anything we're hardwired for is not that hard. It's it's quite simple to learn, right? It's it's sort of a fallacy that math is hard. The only reason mathematics is hard is because people don't do the work required to learn the language. Okay. So if you're just beginning, let's say you're going to do an hour a day, five days a week, and I highly recommend if you're learning, if you're just beginning to learn mathematics, you should spend at least, at least an hour a day, five days a week learning math, okay? So let's say you're, you're spending an hour a day, five days a week learning math. Okay, we've got five boxes, five hours, one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours, right? Now, with anything, if you do anything in your life that you're trying to improve your abilities to do, when you sit down from the first minute that you start doing it, you're not working at optimum capacity, okay? Maybe if you're playing a musical instrument, maybe, you know, if you're playing in some kind of sports, right? You don't go out there if you're playing the game. You don't go out there, uh, you know, get to the field a minute before the game and hop on and play your best, right? That, it doesn't work out that way, right? When you're playing a game, when you, even you're practicing, even if you're, practicing, you know, playing a musical instrument, right? Playing drums, playing guitar, playing piano, playing whatever it is that you're doing, right? You need time to warm up. So if you're spending an hour a day studying mathematics, you're not spending 60 minutes a day studying mathematics. You're actually, you know, taking a little bit of time at the beginning to warm up, and towards the end, your mind drifts, right? You start looking at your watch, and, you know, you're looking at the clock, and, you know, it's almost over, it's almost over, so you're not really paying attention towards the tail end either. So if you're studying an hour a day, 
you're not doing an hour of mathematics a day because the first 10, 15 minutes you're warming up and the last 5 or 10 minutes you're cooling down, right? So what's going to happen is, let's say the first time you're, you ever sit down to do math for an hour, the first 15 minutes your mind is wandering and you're slowly warming up, right? So the first 15 minutes is a write-off and the last 10 minutes is a write-off. So 15 minutes is a write-off, 10 minutes is a write-off, so that's 25 minutes gone out of 60 minutes. Right? So what you're doing is really just studying 35 minutes. That's your first time ever sitting down studying mathematics for an hour a day. Right? So you only have 35 minutes there on the first time you're doing it where you're studying. Those, this and this are a write-off. The next hour you sit down, maybe the 10 minutes is a write-off and 5 minutes at the end is a write-off. So let's say for the next 4 hours that you sit down in different days, the first 10 minutes is a write-off, is you warming up. It's not really a complete write-off because you are warming up, right? 10 minutes is a write-off, last 5 minutes is a write-off. So if you spent 5 hours studying, you spent 5 hours studying, but from here you got 25 minutes that's useless, right? You're warming up or cooling down, right? 15 minutes warming up, 10 minutes cooling down, 10 minutes warming up. 15 minutes or 5 minutes cooling down, right? So 15 minutes gone from here, 15 minutes gone from here, that's half an hour. Another half an hour, that's an hour. Hour and 25 minutes gone. You're not really doing too much. You're not doing too much learning. You're warming up, you're cooling down. So hour and 25 minutes gone. Let's round that up to an hour and a half. Hour and a half minus five hours, that's three, three and a half hours you're actually studying mathematics, you're learning mathematics. So spend five hours, you spent five hours studying, an hour a day for five days, but you only really got three and a half hours in, okay? Compare that to doing two and a half hours once every two days, okay? So let's look at it with you doing two and a half hours one day and then taking a day break and doing another two and a half hours. Okay. Let's say each one of those bars is two and a half hours, right? Two and a half, two and a half, that's five hours total. So you've studied five hours total, two days a week, right? Now, just like before, a few minutes at the beginning and a few minutes at the end are going to be a write-off because that's your warm-up and cool-down, right? So let's assume for the first two and a half hours, again, 15 minutes is a write-off at the beginning because you're warming up, 10 minutes is a write-off at the end, okay? So let's say 15 minutes is a write-off from the beginning, 10 minutes is a write-off at the end. Let's say the next time you study two and a half hours, the first 15 minutes is a write-off and 10 minutes is a write-off at the end too, right? So that's 25 minutes and 25 minutes. That gives us 50 minutes, right? So if you subtract 50 minutes from five hours, let's write, round up the 50 minutes to an hour, right? So if you study for five hours, Subtract an hour because warm up, cool down, you've only studied, you've studied basically for four hours. So if you studied for four hours, right? You spent five hours here per week studying mathematics, you only really got in 3.5 hours of efficient math study time. Over here, you study for five hours, you got in four hours efficient math study time. So you got an extra half an hour study time here. You, you spent half an hour longer learning what it is that you were trying to learn than you did over here. And here's the kicker. Most people don't spend nearly an hour of doing mathematics. What they do is they sit down and try to do half an hour of math. Well, if you write off the first 10, 15 minutes when you sit down. If you do half an hour, you can write off the first 10 minutes, right? You're warming up and you write off the next, you know, the last five minutes. So if you're sitting down and studying for half an hour a day of math, if you write off 15 minutes of that, you're only actually sitting down studying 15 minutes of math. So your efficiency is cut back to 50% efficiency, right? So studying longer is better. If you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, about efficiency and doing the division, that's just straight up ratios, and it's one of the most powerful things that you can use to optimize your life, right? So keep this in mind. This is hint number two, advice number two when it comes to studying mathematics. Longer is better. The more often you do it, 
the better. Okay. If you're just at the beginning stages of learning mathematics and you're spending 15 minutes a day to learn math, to learn something new, to learn a language, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to learn math. You're going to stay in that group that ends up hating math and you're not going to go beyond that. right? And at some point you're going to hit a wall. And once you hit that wall, you're going to look back and go, gee, I wish I spent, you know, the time required to learn the language of mathematics. That way I wouldn't be stuck where I am right now because you can see where you want to be. And you can't go there until you learn this language. And one other thing to keep in mind is when you're studying two and a half hours, right, you don't have to do two and a half hours in one shot during a day, right? After an hour and a half, you might need to take a food break, right? So you can put a little gap here. After a certain amount of time where you're standing two and a half hours straight, you might put a gap here and you might need to get some food in you, right? You can go eat for half an hour, right? Don't, wa don't go there and watch TV. Don't go on the computer, do things, talk to your friends. Spend time by yourself. Go for a walk, right? When you're doing these long, steady out sessions, you know, go for a walk. Okay, because what happens is when you take a break here from your work, you know, not doing anything else, don't go out there and do anything else. When you take a break here, when you go for a walk, when you're eating, the math is still clicking in your head, right? So that half an hour that you're, you've stepped away from your work, you've stepped away from the table, your mind is still processing math, still in the math mode. So what you're doing is, when you're studying two and a half hours and taking a little break in the middle and not occupying your mind with other other stuff, maybe you're going for a walk, maybe you're do, going and doing a little bit of exercise, some push-ups, some sit-ups, some chin-ups, whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe you need some food in you to keep the brain clicking, right? When you take that break, your mind is still in a math mode. So two and a half hours of work with a little half an hour break in the middle, that you know, kicks it into three hours of math a day because your mind is still processing, right? So that's really good as well. And you don't, you can't do that when you're doing an hour a day, right? If you take a break, you know, you only, you know, 15 minutes of warm up, 10 minutes of warm up. If you do 10 minutes of math, 20 minutes of math, take a break. Your brain hasn't clicked into full, you know, hasn't gone into full math mode yet, right? When you do an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half of math. Your brain is fully into math mode. So even if you step away for a little while, your, your mind is clicking, 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 still going at math, right? So you're actually, to a certain degree, studying during that period. And then when you go back to it, some of those problems that you were working on, some of the things that you didn't understand, they may come back to you. So two and a half hours of math with a little break in the middle, that actually could be considered to be three hours of mathematics, okay? Now, don't abuse that power. Okay? Don't sit there and do 20 minutes of math and take an hour and a half break and then do another 20 minutes of math. That doesn't work that way, right? Make sure you do a long, you know, fair bit of math, take a short break, whatever it is, relative to how long you've studied, and then go back to do math, okay? And that is the most optimum way that I've I found myself of how I can study. And this works for other courses as well. So the second tip, the second advice I have for you, if you're going to study, whatever it is that you're going to study is longer is better. The more you spend doing what it is that you're supposed to be learning, the better you're going to become at it, the more efficient you're going to become at it, the less you're going to hate it. And at some point in your life, you know, if you don't love all of mathematics, you're going to come across certain parts of math, certain parts of the language that you learn that's going to make you appreciate it and love it because it's going to make your life a lot easier. Okay. Hint number two, longer is better.